Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And we're continuing our series entitled Faith Revisited. And this is the fifth message in this series. So today, our message is entitled The Diligent Seekers. This is part five. Turn with me, please, to our scripture, Luke chapter 8, verse 4 through 8. And when a great crowd was gathering, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path, and some trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it, and some fell on the rock. As it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it, and choked it. And some fell into good soil, and grew, and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Jesus was on his world tour, so to speak. He was going through their villages and cities, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 8 is the last part of verse 1. The people, hearing all the wonderful things that Jesus was saying and doing, decided to converge on that city or that village where Jesus was preaching. It was probably a Pre, uh, 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 a fishing village because it seemed to have been on the coast. Anyway, Jesus wasn't just proclaiming the good news, but he was bringing the good news as well. That was, that's what the scripture tells us. Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. We're going to read it from the NIV. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. So Jesus wasn't just talking. He wasn't just proclaiming. He was acting in power, thus leaving us an example. And Paul got that example. Now we, his followers, have to get that example as well, the example that he left, that we not only proclaim, we not only proclaim, but we bring the good news as well. We have some type of action. See, we must understand that we must combine what we hear with our faith to produce action. But first, we have to hear. When Jesus saw all the people coming from these cities and surrounding villages gathering together to hear the word of God, he lifted up his voice and told him that parable that we just read. This tells me that that portion of scripture is very important because Jesus waited until all the people from the surrounding villages and the surrounding cities had, had converged on that little town where he, he was at and because he wanted the maximum amount of people to hear this parable. And even more, that parable is recorded in all three of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew said, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 through 3, says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. Mark likewise said in Mark chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, Again, he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. So when this huge crowd had gathered, Jesus opened up his mouth and he began teaching the crowd about what? About faith. But he didn't just say it plainly because it was not for everyone. Not everyone. This word was not spoken to everyone. 
How do I know that? Well, just take a look at what Jesus says after he finishes telling the parable. Luke chapter 8, the last part of verse 8. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is a strange thing to say because I would assume that everyone there that day had ears to hear. If not, they could come and they could receive their healing if they were deaf. Because Jesus was not only proclaiming, remember? He was bringing the good news. So what that tells me is this. It tells me that that was not, that word was not for everyone, but only for the diligent seekers. The casual bystander would not profit from those words. Why would you say that, Brother Kenny? Well, just take a listen to what Jesus said when, he came, when, when they came to him after the crowd had left and they went back to their villages. They went back to the cities. They came and they asked him about the parable. For that, I want us to look, though, at Mark's gospel. I mean, they, they all say the same thing, but Mark adds something in there that I believe is kind of important. So turn with me to Mark chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive, and may indeed hear but not understand. Least they turn and be forgiven. So did you notice what Mark adds in there? He says, those around him with the twelve. Mark makes a distinction between Jesus' apostles and Jesus' other disciples. He wanted to make sure that we understood that it was not just the twelve, but those around Jesus. Those who followed him and hung on his every word. Those who were hungry for the word of God. Those who desired to be fed. Those who study to show themselves approved. In other words, those who had ears to hear, the diligent seekers. Those were the ones who would receive the secret of the kingdom of God. It is all about what we have been studying in this series. Faith It's all about ohopistis, the faith. It is not that those who or it is not those who hear only, because you can hear but not actively listen and thus make the word of God of no effect. But it is those who hear and put it into action who will prosper from this teaching. Here is what I mean. I want us to turn to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. It says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. This scripture is talking about the people whom Moses led out of Egypt, who heard the word of God verbally. They heard God speak, but they did not believe what they heard. The good news was preached to them, but they did not hear the good news. They did not actively listen to the good news, meaning they did not mix it with the faith, thus putting it into action. Some manuscripts make it even clearer because they say it did not meet with faith in the hearers. We're going to discuss hearing in a little bit more detail in our next message, How to Attain Faith. But for now, I want you to know that they heard the words, but it was made of no effect because of their lack of oho pistis, the faith. They lacked the faith. As powerful and as potent as the word of God is, we can still render all of that potency impotent or ineffective 
or even unproductive by her actions or by her lack of the faith. Look at what Jesus told the Pharisees in Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. So you see, we can nullify the word of God by our actions or by our negative thoughts or by our unbelief and definitely by our disobedience. Let us take it a little bit deeper. Turn with me to John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus is speaking to the Jews who had believed in him. Or in other words, the Jews who had mixed their faith in him with what they heard. His, they, they mixed his teaching and even the teaching of him giving his life as a ransom for many. Like what we have heard and what we have believed and what we have mixed with the faith that's in us. In other words... They, they, they mix that, that, that knowledge of, of Jesus dying on the cross, being buried, and on the third day being raised again to life, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, making intercessions for us. Day and night, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is making intercessions for us. He does not leave us like orphans. These are they who will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Now, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 14, verse 6, and let us see what this truth is that will set us free. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the truth. The truth that sets us free. Without that oh pistis, the truth in Jesus, which requires a personal relationship with him, we are still bound up in our sins. Let us turn our attention now back to the sower. There are four types of soil, or four types of hearers in this parable. Let us see how Jesus interprets each one. First, we're going to look at the first type of hearer. He's found in verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. Now, let us skip down to Jesus' interpretation of his own parable. Look at Luke chapter 8, verse 11 through 12. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Jesus is likening those people who will hear the word of God but not mix it with the faith the ohopistis, the faith. Those who will not mix the hearing of the, uh, of the word with, with, what, with, with the faith will not be saved. If you don't mix what you hear with faith, you will not be saved. He calls what they did trampling underfoot the word of God. These are the ones that say God is gay, or God is a lesbian, or God is trans, God is male, God is female, God is you, God is me. This is blasphemous. This is heresy in the highest. The devil has stolen the truth right out of their hearts, and they have become deceived in their own minds. This is those who trample underfoot the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. And Hebrews ask this question. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 29. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved 
by those who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace. I figure it is a lot worse punishment for them that trample underfoot the Son of God and profane his precious and holy blood. Let us look at the second here. He is found in Luke chapter 8, verse 6. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Now Jesus' interpretation, Luke chapter 8, verse 13. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. These hearers did not ground themselves in Ohopistus, the faith. They were shallow. These are the ones who come to church and listen, but are not active in church. They don't do any type of service in church. No one at their work even know that they are Christians. They don't pray. They don't read their Bibles. They don't study their Bibles. They definitely don't witness, and they don't even pay their tithes. These are what we call Sunday morning Christians. So when hard times come, they fall away because they don't have a real relationship with Jesus, the Son of God. Let us now look at the third type of hearers. Luke chapter 8, verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. Now the interpretation, Luke chapter 8, verse 14. And as for what fell among the thorns, there are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. Notice that these hearers bear fruit. But the fruits don't develop. They do not mature because they are choked before they can come to maturity. These hearers are those who accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They begin to testify. They tell the truth about what they have learned. They tell the truth about what they have believed. They even get baptized. They are boldly striking out for Jesus. But because of political correctness, and the pressures that comes with serving Jesus, they fall away. They apologize for being baptized in the Jordan River. They apologize for being so vocal about, about the things of God. And they are afraid to lose their careers because their careers may suffer because they identify with the things of Jesus. They identify with truth. So they apologize for it because they do not want to lose the leading roles that they would probably get. But really, as Christians, they shouldn't even be taking that role in the first place. But anyway, they are afraid to lose their fame. They are afraid to lose their fortune. They are afraid to lose their jobs for the sake of Jesus Christ and for the sake of the gospel. These are those who get caught up in the spread of racism, advocating social justice instead of promoting biblical justice. These are the hearers who are after hearing lead others astray with their so-called progressiveness, embracing things that God calls abominations and accepting practices that are not natural. In fact, some of those things are against nature themselves, yet they promote it as something wonderful, something special, and something beautiful. Spreading lies that God accepts any and everything, and all roads lead to God. They call bad good, and they call good bad. And when the thorns, these thorns, rise up, they redefine their definition of marriage, or they take it down off of their website altogether. They know better, but the political pressures cause them to compromise. Compromise is the biggest killer of this third hearer. But there's a fourth hearer. Look at Luke chapter 8, verse 8. 
and some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. So what is Jesus' interpretation of this fourth Herod? Luke chapter 8, verse 15. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. These are the true Christians that are persecuted for their beliefs. These are those who bear lasting fruit. They're persecuted by the left. They're persecuted by the right. They're even persecuted by the church because they believe wholeheartedly in the inerrant, indivisible logos of God. They believe in thus saith the Lord. So if God said it, I can have it. If God said it, he told me I can do it. I can do it. I believe what God said I should believe. And that is what I believe. This is those who, who, who after hearing, mix what they have heard with ohopestus, the faith. They put, they do not put family first. They do not put country first. They do not put culture first. They do not put race first. They do not put job first. They do not put finances first. They do not put anything before Jesus and his word because it's all about Jesus and him crucified and him raised to life again for the forgiveness of all of our sins. After Jesus spoke the parable about the sower, this is what Mark says. Mark chapter 4, verse 33 through 34. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. So again... We have the diligent seekers getting even more. So Jesus spoke to them in parables as much as they were able to hear or as much as they could understand at that time. But to those who receive the secret of the kingdom, the diligent seekers, he explained everything. There was no limit for the diligent seekers, those who hunger and thirst after the things of God, for they will be filled. We have to understand that it is not enough just to hear, but we must couple that hearing with ohopistus, the faith. When that happens, then we must put it into action because faith without action is dead. We cannot let the word of God, either logos or rhema, go void by way of doubt. It, we cannot let it go, go, go void because of disobedience or slackness. That amounts to spiritual laziness. Faith demands action. Let me say that again. Faith demands action. Look at, at how Jesus explains it in Luke chapter 8, verse 16 through 18. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Look at verse 18. Take care then how you hear. For to the one who has more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. No one, after being enlightened about the things of God, hides his enlightenment. Peter and John puts it this way, Acts chapter 2, verse 20. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. That is what Jesus expects for us to, to, to so let our light shine. Let our light so shine that others may see. It's like our last message, hidden faith. If we try to stick 
her lap under the bed or try to hide it under a bowl or try to hide it in the ground. It will be like the servant who hid his, his talent in the ground and see what happened to him. He did not come to a good end. Now I want you to look at verse 18. This is very interesting. It confirms a message. It says, verse 18, Take care then how you hear. For to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. It says, take care then how you hear. There is a right way and a wrong way to hear. And it is critical that you get that right because it is critical, it's crucial to your salvation. But we're going to cover that in more detail in our next message, How to Attain Faith. We will also uh, address verse 24 in that message as well. But here is the takeaway for this message. If you keep your faith hidden, in other words, if you do not mix what you hear with ohopistis, the faith, and have that result in action, you will be condemned just as the lazy servant in the parable of the talents. Each one of us is given a measure of faith. Each one of us must be the diligent seeker or a diligent seeker. We must let our light so shine so that the whole world will know and will have the opportunity to know as well and come to repentance and, and receive that saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. He is the salvation. He is the savior of the whole world, at least to those whomsoever will. So that brings me to my usual question. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are your sins covered by the blood of Jesus? If so, are you letting your light shine that others are seeing Jesus in you? Are you being a witness for him? If you have answered no to any of those questions, there is a way to make it right. All you have to do is to ask for whomsoever will. If you ask, you will receive. How, how do I do that, Brother Kenny? Well, say this prayer with me. Mean it with your heart. And the prayer of faith will save you. So if you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, say this prayer and mean it. Repeat with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I want to have that faith that Brother Candy preached about. I want to couple it with what I hear. The logos of God. I want to couple it that I may have action. That I may put my faith into action. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me life, life eternal. I accept it now. I accept your forgiveness, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is to get yourself a Bible. Read your Bible. Get a highlighter and highlight that Bible. Highlight those things, those promises that are meaningful to you. So that when, when, when you go through trials, go through temptations, you can use the Word of God as a sword to defend, to attack. Get yourself or, or find yourself a Bible-believing church who believes in the right way, who believes in thus saith the Lord, who believes that, that there's still sin. And there's still righteousness. And who do not embrace the world. But who shuns the world and celebrates Jesus and his word, his commandment. 
be, be uh, discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back and he finds you doing what it is you should be doing, he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because he's not coming back for everybody. Remember, it's those who hear and who mix it with faith and who puts it into action that he's coming back for. May the Lord bless you. May he strengthen you. May he give you the faith to do great exploits for him. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.